Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're in the kitchen again tonight, and tonight we are going to make Asiago bagels. These are delicious because they have this hint of Asiago cheese in the dough, and they also have Asiago cheese on top of the bagel while they bake. So let's get started. I'm going to make this in the bread maker, mostly because I don't feel like mixing it by hand. It doesn't actually matter how you do it. It really doesn't. You can do it by hand if you like. You can use your bread maker, you can use your mixer. It literally doesn't make a difference. We are just using the bread maker to make the dough and allow for that first rise cycle. So the ingredients we're going to need, we're gonna need one cup of water. Lukewarm water works well. Do not use a uh, hot water because it'll kill your yeast, okay? So you want that. You want about one tablespoon of butter you can use margarine. You want two tablespoons of brown sugar, tightly packed, remember, brown sugar is always measured, tightly packed. You're gonna do one teaspoon of salt. Any salt works in this recipe. This particular time I am using a table salt, but you can use any salt. You can use Himalayan or kosher or anything else you like. We are going to add about half a cup of Asiago cheese grated, not chopped. It's important that it be grated. If it's it chopped into cubes, it's not really going to work very well because it won't get properly incorporated into your dough. Now you're gonna do three cups of flour, just all purpose or bread flour, whatever you normally use to make bread, and one heaping teaspoon of yeast. Now I'm using bread machine yeast because I'm doing this in the bread maker. You can use a quick rise yeast, or if you're doing it by hand, you can do it with a traditional yeast. The choice is up to you. Now we're gonna pop this in the bread maker. My dough cycle takes about an hour and a half, so you wanna mix it, knead it, allow for its first rise, then we will come back and we will work on the dough and show you how to shape the bagels and bake them. All right, so our dough is ready. If it's too sticky for you, don't be afraid to use a little bit of flour, but I'm probably not going to use any flour. So, <clears throat> excuse me, now we need to roll it out. I'm just using my gradiated rolling pin. It has these little rings that you can remove to make it so that it's closer down to your counter or higher up. So I'm doing about half an inch thick, and I like using this roller because it gives me a nice, even dough so that I don't have some spots that are thicker than others. Now if you see some bubbles, some air bubbles, pop them. You don't want a bunch of air bubbles. Just roll that out and I have to grab my bagel cutter. I will be right back. Just got to run over and get my bagel cutter. Ha ha. I left my bagel cutter in the dining room. Got it. So Roll your dough, okay, nicely, nicely, nicely. Then you're gonna take your bagel cutter. I will put a link to this uh, bagel cutter in the description, because some people have said they have difficulty finding these. So I'll put a link, and I'll put a link to this dude as well, to the rolling pin. So push down, and because it's round, you can twist to get through the dough. Push down, twist. Push down, twist. Don't worry about making them perfect. It's not really that big a deal. What are you gonna do? Eat them. So don't worry about it. Let go. There we go. So we're just gonna do that. And one more here. And then we're going to put those on our cookie sheet. So I've just got my cookie sheet here. I'm using, you want a liner of some kind, so I'm using just my copper liner, but if you don't have a copper liner, you can use parchment paper. You could decide instead that you're going to spray it with a cooking spray, that's fine too. But these do tend to stick a little bit because you're gonna have uh, cheese everywhere. <laughs> so yeah, I would recommend um, a liner on your pan. Okay, just take these apart. Then you can re-roll your dough. 
All right, re-roll your dough and make some more bagels. Okay, we're all good there. We're going to make some more bagels after that. I don't, I'm not going to make you watch all that because that's boring. But do exactly the same thing. Just re-roll your dough. Uh, there we go. Re-roll your dough and then put them all... Oops. We're going to re-roll that one. That one got screwy. But uh, re-roll your dough and cut them again. Okay, so kind of work your dough so it's raw, like that. And roll it again. Okay, and do that and put them all on your cookie sheet. Then set it aside. And while you're setting it aside, turn some water on to boil. Okay, so a medium-sized pot about half filled with water will work wonders. So get yourself a medium-sized pot, fill it halfway up with water, put it on the stove, set it to boil. When it's boiled, we'll come back and I'll show you what to do. You want to leave these to sit untouched while that water is boiling. All right, so our water is boiling and our bagels have been sitting. So now what you need to do is you're going to need a little bit of honey, about two tablespoons. One, two, and give that just a minute here to dissolve into the water and let the water return to a boil. So you are going to need a slotted spoon or something else to remove the bagels from the water without a lot of water sticking, okay? So you don't want a solid spoon where you'll scoop all the water because that's not going to help you. So use your slotted spoon to kind of mix that honey in. It dissolves faster if you give it a mix. There we go. Now, while you're doing this part, you might want to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to do drop a bagel into the boiling water. Depending on how big your pot is, you might be able to do two or even three. So I think I can get three in at a time, so that's what I'm going to do. And then you want to give them 30 seconds to a minute per side. You can kind of tell when it's time to flip them. So you just, you know, give them a little bit of time. You don't want to give them too much time because they'll get really, really chewy. But if you don't boil them long enough, they aren't chewy enough. And bagels are supposed to be a little chewy. So there we go. We're just kind of waiting. You can kind of see, you know, they get kind of wrinkly. That's what you want. And I'm just going to flip them. Oops. There we go. And the honey is important. You do want to make sure you add that honey to the water so they have that sweetness. Because bagels are supposed to be a little bit sweet. Okay, this isn't a pretzel. Pretzels are more salty. This is a bagel, and bagels should have kind of a sweet, honey flavor to them. Mild, but it's there. That's why we use a little bit of honey in the water. We don't coat them with honey. We just boil them in a little bit of honey. And again, 30 seconds to a minute. So I'm going to do this. This one's getting a little wonky. Don't worry if you get a wonky one. They still taste delicious. So 30 seconds to a minute per side, then turn them back over to the original side so you know which is the top. And then just scoop them out. So I'm going to continue boiling these bagels. There is one more step we need to do before we actually put them in the oven. So once your bagels are boiled, I will show you what to do. And I'm not going to make you watch me bo uh, boil a dozen bagels because that's silly. But what I'll do instead is I will finish boiling them and then we'll come back. There we go. Just let me get these ones in. So we will come right back as soon as all of these are boiled and then I'll show you what to do next. So our bagels are boiled. This one got a little out of control. No big deal. It'll still taste great. So now that they've been boiled, we have to top them. We're going to get an egg. Just one egg. Smash that up with your basting brush. You don't have to be too picky. Just give it a smash and a swirl. There we go. Smash and a swirl. Now you're going to coat each bagel with an egg. Okay, so just get your egg, coat it. You don't need to dilute the egg with water or anything because they're already pretty wet from being boiled. So really all you need to do is just spread some egg on them. This helps our topping adhere. 
Okay, you don't always have to use an egg wash, but if you're doing a topping that may or may not stick properly, you do want to use some kind of wash just so that it sticks nicely. There we go. So we're just going to finish coating these with egg. Then you are going to want to get more Asiago cheese. You're going to want, it really kind of depends here how much you would like on your bagels, but a half cup is good. You know, if you need a little more, that's okay. If you use a little less, that's also okay. But half cup is normally what people use when they top, but if you, if you really don't want to use that much cheese, that's okay too. All right, so you're going to do as much or as little cheese as you want, but you do need some in order to really give these that Asiago flavor. Now, can you substitute with other cheeses? Yes. If you'd rather substitute with a Parmesan or really any of your harder cheeses, you can absolutely do that. And you'll notice I've got this little guy here. That's for the doggies. <laughs> so, now we're going to need some more Asiago cheese. And what we're going to do is we're going to sprinkle Asiago on each one. It's okay if it goes in the hole. It's okay. It don't, don't worry about it. So as much cheese as you like. It doesn't have to be a ton of cheese. I'm putting quite a bit because I really love cheese. <laughs> I love cheese, okay? I'm not going to pretend I don't love cheese. I adore cheese. So because I love cheese... These bagels are going to be pretty cheesy because cheese is delicious and that's just the way it is. And I happen to really like Asiago. Not everybody does. Some people think it's a little bit too bitter. Okay. There we go. And then we're just going to top this little dude with a little bit. There we go. Now we're going to put them in the oven at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 to 25 minutes or until they're as dark as you want them to be. So we'll come back as soon as they are done. Remember, 375 degrees Fahrenheit, 20 to 25 minutes. And there you have it. Delicious, fun Asiago bagels. They are excellent for breakfast or for dinner. Doesn't really matter. And they are an artisan bagel. They do cost a little bit more to make because Asiago is not cheap. But they are worth it and they are frankly quite delicious. These ones are still hot from the oven. Excellent with a little butter. They're also great for making a sandwich. So I hope you had fun making Asiago bagels here with us today. I enjoyed it, and I make these all the time. I hope you'll do this at home. We'll see you tomorrow.